guys, it's Rebecca, and I'm wearing my crazy koala hat today to tell you that I'm all ears. <laughs> well, no, actually, I'm wearing my koala hat today because it just makes me happy. And I'm happy to share with you my latest creation, the Bluebird of Happiness three-dimensional pop-up box. And what's great about this is it actually mails in an envelope because you can just squish it flat, see like that? And then it fits right in to its matching little envelope, which also has a little bluebird on it. And what I love about this is it's a card because you can write your little message on the back. And it's also something that they can keep out on their desk or on their bookcase to remind them how much you are loved. Can you see that back there? And who doesn't need a little reminder of that every day? So keep watching to see how to make this Bluebird of Happiness pop-up box. Here's what you need to make the Bluebird exploding box pop-up. You're gonna need the template printed out on white cardstock. The template comes in two formats. You can print out the colored version and just start making it like I'm gonna do in the video. Or if you're into coloring and wanna make this into your own custom colors, I also have a black and white version that's included with the template so that you can color your bluebird, your hearts, your flowers, and all the pieces yourself. You're gonna need a scoring tool. You can use a paper clip to score, one of these ball head scoring tools. And I've also recently learned that you can actually use a bone folder. This is found in your scrapbook or bookmaking aisle. And what's great about it is you can score, but you can also crease. So if you don't have strong fingernails, which I have a tendency to have thin ones, this is a great investment to make. You're gonna need a ruler, a pair of scissors, a glue stick. I like this wrinkle-free glue stick so you don't get wrinkles in your finished project. And the secret ingredient here is a clamshell packaging. This is something I just dug out of my recycle bin. These, this had tomatoes, you'll see it in the blueberries and things like that. And what happens is we're gonna cut the back of this down into these little strips like this and then this eventually becomes what we mount our floating pieces on so you get that sort of exploding transparency look that's so effective. So that's actually from recycling, stuff in your recycle bin. The first step is to score. And you're gonna wanna score along these dotted lines indicated on the template. And I'm gonna show you two ways how to score. The first way using this paper clip and a ruler. And you just line your ruler up along that dotted line and then you're going to take the paper clip and just drag it across to make an indentation into the paper. And now I'm going to use the bone folder, which I actually am starting to like better than the ball creasing tool, but they both work great. And I'm just going to turn this around and score all four sides of the envelope. Okay. I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to grab this next page which is the part that actually ends up becoming the box and I'm just going to repeat the process working from right to left scoring all of the dotted lines on this page. And scoring is an important step because it allows you to get really precise and crisp folds. And now I'm going to turn it, I'm going to do the same thing going this direction. One's done. And now our last page, which is the page with all the little bits, and I'm just gonna score these ones going from right to left. 
And it's okay if you kind of go beyond the score line there. Sometimes that works better because then the score goes all the way to the end of the page. Okay, so that's it for the scoring step. And now is the cutting step. I'm gonna start with this page that's in front of me and I'm just gonna cut along all of the solid lines. So, and then I'm gonna come back in and cut out all of these little bits. And you'll notice that there's a bleed line, that's this color that extends past the flowers and the heart. And those are there so you don't have to cut quite so precise to get a great looking card. So what I do is I actually cut on that bleed line and go all the way around. And so I don't have to be like right on the black line of the flowers. So I don't have to be quite as detailed with my cutting. And I find that when you get into these tight curves of the flower, it's a lot easier to keep your scissors in one place and turn your paper than to try to turn your scissors into the paper. You end up with a lot less um, tears in those tight corners. Now I'm using quite a large pair of scissors for this. If you have a smaller pair of scissors, you may have um, better luck using that for these detailed sections. I'm just gonna kinda come across the top like that. And then I'm gonna repeat this for all of the little shapes. And now thanks to the magic of television, all my little parts that are gonna be soaring in my box are cut out. And now I'm gonna cut out the box. Now this, start with cutting out the big rectangle going along the outer edge. And then we'll come in and do some of the detail cuts that make the flap of the box. And I love how this kind of becomes a, like an origami fold. And it's really the reason I love pop-ups so much because you get to take a flat piece of paper and fold it and glue it and turn it into something that's three-dimensional. That part just gets me super excited. That's why I enjoy doing these so much. Here I'm going to come all the way down into that V, but then instead of turning and coming back up, I'm going to come across the top of the flaps. And then we'll come back in and cut those V shapes. And I find that's easier than trying to cut in and turn your scissors because it's such a tight area. Great. Now I'm going to come in and cut these V's. Now the last thing you need to cut is this solid line and you're going to cut all the way up and then stop where it turns to the dotted line and you're going to cut three of these. One, two, and just be careful not to cut past that dotted line. So that completes the cutting on the box. I'm gonna set that aside. Then the last thing to cut out is the envelope. 
And I find it's easiest, again, to go ahead and cut the outer edge and then come back in and hit those little V's. So there's the outer edge, and now I'm going to come back in and cut those little notches. And I find it's best to just cut in on one side, and then come over and cut the other side, and then the little triangle just falls out. There you have it, and there's the envelope all cut out. Now the last thing we need to cut is our piece of trash. <laughs> and the goal here is you wanna, now I realize your container is gonna look different than mine, but you're looking for a smooth piece of plastic like this one in my hand. And these labels are a nightmare <laughs> to remove. You could probably get a couple of strips out of the left and the right, but I really wouldn't waste your time trying to get that sticker off. So on this particular one, I'm seeing this bottom corner as the best culprit. So this stuff cuts really easy with your scissors. So just start hacking in there. And I just cut out this bottom piece. It's really easy to cut. I'm not using a lot of force with my hand. And then from that section, we won't need that. Now from this section, I'm just gonna come in and cut off any of those um, indentations from the mold. And cut that. And you probably need a piece about this size to do this card. That's the size piece you'll need. I say that's about two inch by one inch. And then what we're gonna do is you're just gonna come in and you're just gonna cut strips. And you're gonna need six strips for the heart and one strip for the bluebird. So I'm just gonna come up here like this. And they don't all have to be the same thickness. Um, you don't need to be a perfectionist here. You just want little strips. I wouldn't go any thinner than that one. Three. Four. Five. Six. Those are the hearts. And then one more for the bird. And I still had a little extra. So there's my little risers for my flying bits. And I'm just going to set those aside. And now we're done with the cutting portion of the project. The next step is to glue. And for all of this gluing, I'm going to use this wrinkle-free glue stick. And the first thing I'm going to glue is all of my little plastic strips onto the bits. And to do that, it's really easy. You just take your glue stick, smear a little bit on the back, and then take your strip, press it on, like so. I got a little stringer there, but there you see the hearts sticking on the back. And then I'm just gonna repeat this for the bird and all of the little hearts. And now for the bird, I like to line up the plastic strip with his little feet, like so. Just give it a good press and then set it aside to dry. Now, thanks to the magic of television, I got all of my hearts and the birds on their little translucent sticks. And now I'm gonna focus my attention onto this box portion. The flowers piece still hasn't been stuck down yet. It does not get a clear stick on it, in case you're wondering. 
Let me get the little schmutz off my table. All right. Now for the box, what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting some of the folds going. And so to start the folding, I'm going to work from right to left. And I'm just going to press this over like so. And I'm using my, a fingernail or I'm using a bone folder to press that into a nice tight fold. And then you're going to pull the fold. Bleh. Then you're going to fold the box flaps over like so. And you're going to do that for all three. Now I'm going to glue and I'm going to start by gluing this flap. You just need to apply your glue to the portion closest to you. I got a gob there. I'm just going to fold that over, give it a good press. And then I'm going to do that for these box flaps as well. Make sure to get some glue on that top edge closest to you. Oh, need a little bit more glue for that. Press it, give it a good press. Then the last one. And give it a press. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. And we're gonna let that set up for a minute and focus on this piece. Now this is the strip that goes inside the box that all of these little bits that are exploding out attach to. And you'll notice there's an A here and an A here, and that's because those two pieces are going to get glued together. So I find the easiest way to explain this is have the A at the top, and you're going to fold that away from you, like so. And then you're going to come down to the next one, and you're going to fold that one towards you. And then you're going to take the next fold, fold it up, and away from you like this. So we're starting to make kind of a zigzag. And then the B, I'm folding back. So now those A and B should be on the same side as each other. And fold that back. And then this one goes forward like this. So you should end up with a piece in this configuration. And you know you've done it right if you have the A and the B facing the same direction, and then these two sides are white, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I like to kind of take this piece and just fold the start of my box shape. So I just like to kind of get those folds easing forward. And then this last one. So that's eventually where we're going to end up is there. But before we do that, we got to put this middle piece in. So now I'm going to glue and you'll notice there's some coloration like these little zigzag lines. That's just a cue to tell you where to put your glue and to line up your paper piece. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue. I think, it, you know, you could put it on either side. I think this is a little neater to put it on this flap. That way you don't have a tendency to get glue. I kind of a spaz with glue and I get it all over the place. So I find putting it on that flap works for me. And then I'm just gonna turn this down and place it onto that letter A. And what I'm looking for is to line that up with the dotted line. And then I also kind of fold this back and make sure that I'm lined up with the edge of that those swirly lines and that way there I know I have it in the right position and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to put glue 
on this letter B. And you guessed it, it's going to line up with that letter B. I'm just going to line up that dotted line at the top. And I fold this back so I can see the edge. And then I just take my finger and give it a good press. So you should look like this right now. So it's A and B stuck down. And for the A, you just want to make sure that you're all the way into that corner, but not sticking over the corner. So just kind of give your box a little test flip to make sure it's not overhanging and binding up your pop-up movement. Okay. And while my glue's wet, I'm just checking that I'm up against the dotted line there. And now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna apply glue here and here, and then we're gonna fold this up and stick that onto these two white pieces so we end up with it closed like this. Let's do it. And I find it's best to do these at the same time because you won't have as much access to the glue area once this folds over. So now I'm going to start with this first one. Bring the box up. Line it up like so into the corner. Let's see what's the best way to show this to you. Maybe here, like this. So I'm just lining it up again to the dotted line and all the way into the corner. And then I'm gonna take the second one and it kind of starts to fall in place on its own, but you just wanna give it a good look through there to see that you've lined up onto the glue spots. That. And then the last thing to glue is this little flap on the end. I'm just gonna put my glue on there. And then I'm gonna bring it up, and this is what completes going around the box all the way. And on this one, I find I have to kind of hold it because it has a tendency to want to pop open. So I just kind of pinch it with my fingers. And then there you this is where we should be at. You have your box here with the little zigzag on the inside. And just let that set aside while we work on the envelope. Now the envelope folds in four flaps on itself. And I'm just gonna start with the bottom flap, give it a good crease, and take the side flaps fold them in, crease the fold that will seal the envelope, and then the other side flap. And that's why the scoring is so important because that's what, it kind of just starts the fold so you get really precise folds. Now I'm going to turn these flaps in and I'm going to apply glue into this area along the edge of the flaps. And then I'm gonna fold the bottom flap over and give it a good press. And then when I'm ready at this point, I would recommend putting your address onto the envelope at this point, because once you stuff it, it gets kind of, um, the different layers of paper in the envelope, it's hard to write. So I would write the address at this point to who it's going to. All right, so the backs of my little bits are pretty much dry. They're just a little slightly tacky, that's good enough. And on my box, it's all glued. And you'll see this is how it's going to collapse to go into the envelope. It goes like this into the envelope. So we got a nice collapse go in there. That means you've glued and fold everything real straight. So to get started on this part, we're just going to fold our flaps down and just be careful because you don't want to weaken these glue joints when you do that. So just kind of help it the first time. You did crease this, so once it starts folding, it can it gets easier. So I'm just 
those are our little box flaps open. And the first thing you're gonna stick in is your flowers. So I'm just gonna take my glue stick, add a little glue to the bottom of the flowers, say about there. And then I'm going to stick this to the first little flap there inside the box. And then to press it on, I just give it a little pinch. And then our little bluebird of happiness is gonna soar over those flowers. Now the next thing I like to glue in is the little bluebird. Isn't he cute? I love how he bounces. And he's gonna go in the middle slit. And I like to glue um, on the back side. So when you're looking at the card, you don't see where he's stuck in. It's just kind of a preference. So to do that, I'm just gonna put a little glue on the clear stick. I don't know if that's gonna show up, but just to protect my table, I'm gonna put down a piece of scrap take my glue stick, run it over the bottom of that plastic, lift them up, and then I'm just going to put them into the flap there and just give them a pinch with my finger. Probably be easier to see if I held them like this. So I'm just pinching it like that. And there he is. I love how he bounces. Okay. And then you're just gonna kind of repeat this process sticking in your hearts so that you kind of create like a little bouquet of hearts spraying out around him. There's no ideal placement, um, but you just kind of wanna have like three kind of on this side at different heights, three on this side with different heights and levels, like one there, maybe one there, you know, just kind of, Balance it out. I'm using my scrap paper. Just gonna put some glue on that clear stick. I come and come back into the last panel and pinch that heart to the back panel. And it doesn't really take much to hold these on. Stick that one on this side. And I think it looks good when the hearts just pass the side of the box. So there you have all your little hearts placed in there. You're gonna wanna let that glue dry because inevitably you maybe got a little glue onto the panel and what you don't want is it to stick shut. So now our card is dry and we're gonna go ahead and get it ready to mail. So in how we do that, we just kind of help our little flaps up and then we just squish it to the side. So I'm just pushing it down like this. Those little flaps protect all the little bits. And then I grab my envelope and slide them in. Then I'm going to glue along this edge here. Make sure we're down below the fold line. Bring the top flap over and we're ready to mail it out. Who's gonna love getting this card in the mail? I guarantee you they'll be having it sitting out on their desk to remind them of you and how much thoughtfulness and care you put into this project. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and if you'd like to make more fun pop-up cards like these, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up.